Hey guys, I'm Amarod and in this video tutorial I will show you how to use Vertex Shader. You know that we've got this shader editor tool here and I see it only rarely being used by modders. So I would like to talk about it here and now. Uh, so how to use this? There are two main ways or two main things you can use this for. First, if you don't have enough textures. Here or in general on this island I have used four textures like everywhere. I don't have place for more textures, but I would like to use two more textures here. I would like to have something black and something red, some sort of lava. I want to have this well as a volcano, but I can't. I don't have, uh, I don't have slots for my textures. Uh, there is a way around this. I can use shader. Editor. So I will pick completely black shader And I will just paint black shader over this texture here. So now I'm getting get black, black color. That's great. So you can use this for making something with, with, where fire was or something like this. Let's get, I'll use much lower speed. And just black on it around a little bit more. So the transition isn't too harsh there. And that's it. We've got no black. It looks like there was a fire or something some of sort. And but we we didn't have to use more textures. We we are still on four textures only. And let's move even further. Let's use some sort of red shader, for example, bright red, yes. And with very low speed, just gently touch parts here, down here. And now it starts looking a little bit like lava, because the stone here is very cracked. So these cracks now might look a little bit like lava. And now I would probably just uh, place some sort of, uh, you know, some sort of water here, probably, probably just common lava surface. And it would really look like a volcano. But I have just used only four textures, yet it looks completely different. I've created some sort of unique area uh, without using more textures. That's very handy. Another thing, uh, or another way of using shader is by making your objects stand out a little bit more. Uh, we've got, let's say we've got this crystal, which is green. It's a little bit out of place when you take a look around. It doesn't really fit there too much, or it, it, it isn't completely terrible, but well, it's it's unique object, okay? It's in contrast with its surroundings. We can clearly see it, it catches our eye. It makes us uh, go there and take a look who the hell is this crystal. But when we are close to this crystal, it's a little bit weird because it's just a crystal hovering here and it isn't doing anything. It, uh, it, it Literally, it, it isn't doing anything. It is just here. And uh, that's not terribly interesting. So let's make it a little bit more interesting by using actually a shader. I will use a lot of green, some blue, probably not red at all. I think this is okay. Let's start with full slower speed. And we can start making highlights around that crystal. So we want to have uh, to give our, our player feeling that this crystal is producing some sort of light around it, and that will make our uh, our environment look like uh, their crystal. It reverts with that crystal to some sort uh, to some extent that that uh, crystal really belongs there, that it is doing something there that it isn't just a random uh, object which doesn't really fit there very much. So something like this, maybe a little higher speed, closer to crystal, like this. And 
Look at this. This array now starts looking much more like that crystal array belongs there and it looks more interesting. It's so uh, highlighted in just to some degree. And now we can just clearly see that crystal and we can see that it is doing something. It is something important, something interesting because we've got this sort of green light around it while there is no green light around. So this is way better. So we can use this shader to enhance feeling of your scenery. You can use red lights around fires, you can use green lights around such green crystals. You can use this for uh, burnt areas where some sort of firewalls. You can use this everywhere. You can also use this for just to enhance, well, your scenery in general. You've got this grass here and it doesn't look terribly, uh, terribly interesting, I would say. So let's try to use some sort of shader here. Something like this, maybe. And it already is a little bit different. It's getting a little bit different feeling when you light on it like this. So you use shader. And we are already getting completely different feeling from uh, this island when it's lighting up a little bit. So we can use this uh, lighting on both rocks or on grass, you can use it everywhere. You can use it around objects which produce light, but you can also use it just on generic environment to make some spots there a little bit more interesting and uh, to make your island a little bit more colorful, that there are more colors that it's in general something what uh, has more things in it and it uh, doesn't look that flat anymore so now it's it isn't lo looking right flat now it, it is a little bit more you know 3d a little bit more interesting so those are ways of using shaders that are basically free i would say you can use it to enhance your general environment you can use it to mark spots where some objects which are producing lights are and you can use it when you don't have enough of textures but you need something with different color to apply to your scene. So those are three ways of using Vertex Shader actually. I hope this was useful for you guys. Think about this. Try using Vertex Shader on your maps. It's, it is very fun. It looks great sometimes, sometimes not. <laughs> Try it and I hope this was useful for you and as always. Happy morning.